Alex, we're back with another Couch Potato General Manager video. Today we are reacting to a mock draft. And that mock draft was completed by Austin Gale, writer with Pro Football Focus. I think Austin Gale does great work. Some of you may not necessarily be big fans of Pro Football Focus because of you know some of their proprietary methodologies as far as grading athletes. But I do think they do have talent at that particular site, at that particular publication. And we're going to get into Austin Gale's mock draft here reacting with drew joining me juice guys if you like the content you want to see more of this type of content be sure to click that like button and subscribe and as always give us your thoughts your feedback in the comment section so drew at the top of this draft the top of this draft austin Gale has the jacksonville jaguars selecting edge rusher aiden hutchinson so out the gate there's there's really been about three maybe four players associated with this top pick for most mock drafts right if they're going to on the defensive side of the ball, they're trying to bolster that pass rush. You get an Aiden Hutchinson or a Kayvon Thibodeau. If they decide to bolster the offensive line, protect Trevor Lawrence, typically it's Evan Neal, and in some cases, Ika Mikwano. So what do you think about Aiden Hutchinson as the first overall pick? Yeah, I don't I don't hate it, bro. Out of those four, like you said, it doesn't matter which one you pick. I'm, I'm comfortable with all three of them. Uh, or all three of them. All four of them. Uh, and... Aiden Hutchinson, I'm fine with it, man. I mean, power, he's strong. Um, he's got uh, tools for days. What's going to happen with with, um, with Josh Allen over there? What's going to go on with him in terms of his contract? You know, where, where is he going to be at those things? So you're either going to protect your quarterback or you're going to hunt the quarterback. Best sure. way to hunt the quarterback, obviously, is at the line of scrimmage in the trenches, at the, the defensive tackle position, in this case, the defensive end position. Edge rusher Aiden Hutchinson. Yeah, I'm I'm extremely comfortable with this pick. Um, it's, it's not the pick I would make, mm -hmm. but I'm comfortable with the pick. You're wearing the two, I guess, most important elements associated with modern football, which is mm -hmm. protecting your quarterback or affecting the passer in this passing league, right? So th they have their pick of the litter. This really comes down to you know your flavor, Thibodeau, and and the upside that he represents, or are you more comfortable with? with the consistency that we saw this year out of Aiden Hutchinson. Um, and then, of course, you have to weigh, you know, what you saw from that offensive line, which will undergo changes. You know what I'm saying? Cam Robinson, Juwan Taylor, whether it be underperforming or a contract situation, you're going to have to address the offensive line as well. Does, does it make more sense to go ahead and, and, and get you a big Evan Neal or, or an Icky in order to protect Trevor Lawrence blindside? I, I personally... I'm all in. I'm all in on protecting Trevor Lawrence. I'm all in on protecting Trevor Lawrence. So uh, certainly I would I would explore. I would explore a trade down situation here because the Jaguars are rebuilding. Right. You know what I'm saying? You want to you want to give yourselves as many opportunities to to add talent to your roster. But assuming that you can't find someone to go to the dance with you, um, I'm I would prefer at this juncture to address the offensive line. Now when we're referring to, you know, or in, in obviously in the case of Austin Gale's mock draft, he decided on Aiden Hutchinson. And and it's hard to argue with with the production. It's hard to argue with the skill set. A technician with a relentless motor and, and, a, and a quality get off. I, I think all of that works very well in terms of being able to affect the passer, or rather, affect the passer and bend the edge. On to the second pick, Detroit Lions, the aforementioned Kayvon Thibodeau here. I think this one is pretty well understood that that the Lions in all likelihood with the second overall pick are going to go edge rusher they actually have what I think is a quality young offensive line that I believe will continue to get better and improve um, so so they're in a they're in a very favorable position here you know what I'm saying they're going to get an elite talent at the edge position one way or the other and and for my money Thibodeau is the guy that that intrigues me the most what about you yeah, I, I can't disagree. The, the, the only thing I would say is they, they missed out on the hometown product. You know sure, what I mean? Sure. In, in, in Hutchinson in terms of college. But yeah, I mean, like you said, I was just thinking, I'm thinking about their offensive line. And last year, obviously, they got Sewell and and um, is it is it Decker on the other side? Yep, so, yep, you know yep. what I mean? So it's like, that's not, they're, they're not in the same position in terms of the Jaguars. You know what I mean? They, they Now the, the Lions have some work to do like the Jaguars. Sure. But it, this best player available at this point, right? <laughs> at yeah. the at one of the most important positions at, at the edge. So yeah, I, I, I'm. It's one of the two. <laughs> it's yeah. Hutchinson or or Thibodeau, barring you know an injury coming when when the draft comes up. You know, knock on wood for those guys. But yeah, man, that's it. Yeah, I think the Lions actually have an underrated group. They're they're young, 
they're young, but in terms of their offensive line, you, you mentioned Sewell, who who really started to figure it out, you know, yeah, around the midway part, and, and he yeah. finished strong. And of course, Decker has been solid for an extended period of time, but you know, the, the Jonah Jackson, the Ragnos of the world, you know what I'm yep. saying? Like, like the Detroit's been working on that offensive line, and I think I think they have the right pieces. Uh, Haloti Vitae, you know what I'm saying? I, I think I think Detroit actually has a good group, a very underrated group up front. With the next pick, Austin Gill has the Houston Texans selecting the aforementioned Evan Neal. Most mocks have the Texans either going Thibodeau or Hutchinson, right? right. Just kind of based on what happens at the top of the draft. But but there is a concern along that offensive line, even though the Texans have, over recent years have, have put in some premium draft capital in terms of trying to address the offensive line. It just hasn't necessarily worked out. In this case, they get Evan Neal. Um, we think that Laramie Tunsil might be on the move as, as they kind of rework things and go through their rebuild in Houston. Neal actually puts you in very favorable position here, if that's the case. What do you think about the pick? Yeah, and, and let me just say this. Um, Sarah McCoy down in the comment section. I know you're going to be down there, so I'm going to go ahead and say it. You got your pick. Offensive tackle. Here it is. Austin Gill. Uh, maybe he was in, in our comment section. Maybe he was in his comment section. You know, I, I don't I don't know. But um, I, I like the pick. And, and actually, before I saw a comment, I, I was thinking, you know, maybe when we do our next mock, that's maybe where I was going to go offensive line. You know what I mean? And, and it makes sense. Um, you know, it's e for, for them, it's either or. Um, I think they're kind of in the same position like the Jaguars outside of, you know, who's going to be the quarterback. Um, you know, they, they could go in the trenches on either side and I like the pick. It's what's needed. So, yeah. I mean, when, when you're at the top and you have an opportunity to take one of the, the top players at the top at a position of need, I mean, you can't outside of trading down because, you know, the, the deal was just too good. You know, it, right. It, it, it's I mean, Let's not be dumb here. Right? Yeah, yeah. It, you know it, what I mean? Come it's on. It's relatively easy. Right. Relatively easy. I, I think, to your point, the consternation is, depending on who's the, on the board, do right. you address the the upper echelon edge rusher or do you get the 10-year, the you know, offensive tackle? You know what I'm saying? That That's that's a good problem to have at the end of the right. day. That, that, is, that is a good problem to have. With the fourth overall pick, the New York Jets, the first of two first-round selections, Austin Gill has them selecting quarterback Derek Stingley. Now, Stingley obviously is well known throughout the draft community. I think the casual fan probably is aware of Derek Stingley because of all the fanfare that came along with him when he entered the collegiate ranks and, and of course, his sterling freshman campaign at LSU. Uh, Stingley has it all. Sting Stingley has all the tools, but but injuries have been a concern here. And this is this is a talented cornerback class that we have here. Do, do, do you go Stingley here at four? I, I think we, we certainly agree that that this is a need. This is a bit of an eyesore with with respect to the, the Jets. But but would you take Stingley this early? No, because because he's not he's he's not my he's not my top two. Might not even be my top mm. three in terms oh, of wow. corners. You know, wow. I mean? he's he's in the top five. I'm trying to think, trying sure. to run through it. But he's he's not my number one corner. I wouldn't go with him here. I I don't mind the position. Um, they could go offensive line, offensive tackle. Yep. Uh, they could go receiver. You know, uh, I, I understand the, the the position. I just don't like. I'm not high on Stingley like every like a lot of people are. So, so, so why is that? Well, what are your reservations regarding Stingley? The obvious is the injuries, right? Sure. He hasn't really finished the season or has battled injuries, missed games, um, outside of that that freshman year. And then th there's just, and I'm gonna say it every time somebody asks me, there's just something missing with him, man. You know what I mean? When I look at an Andrew Booth, when I look at a Kyrie Elam, when I when I look at a Sauce Gardner, I, I see them and I see it all. Mm. For Stingley, it's just kind of like, how did you allow that to happen? Like, you know what yeah. I mean? It's just yeah, like, how, like bro? You're there. Like, what's going on? There's you know a what I mean? Of that. It's, it's, yeah. and, and, and again, I think it might be, you know, he's just like, I'm bored. Like, I'm just, this is too easy. I'm too smooth. You know what I mean? And then it's just there on him. And it's like, oh, you know what I mean? So, I, he, he may end up being the best corner, period. You know what I mean? Because um, sure. he, ha he certainly has the talent, the size, the speed, the, the, everything that you want at the position. But it, it's also up here, though, too. Like that, yes. that's a big piece, especially playing that position. You can't you can't not have that. You know what yeah. I mean? If you, and and, and the, there can't be lapses at that position because people will just blow right past you. You know what I mean? So that, that's kind of my concern with him um, and, and why I wouldn't go with him going th this high. All right. Moving right along with the fifth overall pick, the New York Giants dressing their offensive line with Ikem Ikwanu. And I know this is your guy. Whether it's Neil 
Kwanu. I think you grab either one of those tackles here yeah. in the fifth overall pick, and that's a, that's a slam dunk. You pair him with Andrew Thomas. You start to actually get this offensive line figured out. There's going to be some moving parts here. The contracts expiring in New York. Of course, it's going to be a new GM, new head coach, new offensive system, uh, potentially another quarterback within the next, I don't know, year or so here. <laughs> it, it, right. A lot's going to change, but but certainly if, if you can get a guy like Icky to go along with Andrew Thomas and round out the rest of that group up front, you, you really start to set yourself up to have some success. Yeah, you, you really do. And, and I, I do like the pick. And even if you were to run it with the, the current quarterback that you have, you know, at least, you know, okay, I'm getting a look at what my offensive line could look like with, with two book ends mm-hmm. and with the stellar running back, if he can stay healthy back in the backfield and, you know, potentially no excuses for uh, that said quarterback and Daniel Jones. Right. Right. Um, you know, and then from there, you know, I, I don't know, you know, if you go in the second round, you get it, get, get, get that guy that you, um, that you may like in terms of quarterback, or you say, you know what, we'll run with this guy one more year and we'll see what happens. But at least your offensive line, the, the, the trenches is, is set and ready to go. Let me ask you this question before we move on. Iquanu has only played left tackle, right? And, and currently I knew, Andrew Thomas. I knew, I knew he was going to ask me that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta ask the question. <laughs> I gotta ask the question. That's what I'm here for. Right. Currently, Andrew Thomas, you know, is is in that particular position, right? And and Thomas, Thomas is playing on both ends, right? He's played right tackle, he's played left tackle. The Kwanu, um, some see him as a guard as opposed to a tackle. What would you do? How would you deploy these two players, assuming you're in full control of the New York Giants? This is the um this is the Lions conversation all over again from last year. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then Sewell mm-hmm. got his shot, play left tackle, balled out and all that stuff. But uh, because Andrew Thomas has played right tackle, played both positions before, I probably move him to right tackle. It's going to hurt you, um, I think, because it took him a minute to kind of get adjusted. Get comfortable, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. But he can be different. Like I can't, I can't not have him play left he, tackle. For yeah, me. I hear you. Can't, I, I hear can't you. do that. I think he, I think you have to do it. Um, and you just gotta, gotta move. You gotta go with the growing pains. You know, at least if 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 um, Ekum gets hurt, you have a guy who's played left tackle before, and you can move him sure. back over. And not to say that that's you know you want to be playing musical chairs, but um, yeah, that's that's probably what I do. And I understand the, the part about playing guard, but you're not drafting that high. I don't think to play guard. You know what I mean? Um, you can. Is, is Nate Solder? Is he? Is he like what's, <laughs> Is he coming back? Like what's going on with that? You know what I mean? But um, no, uh, he he was playing left tackle, and and Thomas is going to play. Andrew Thomas is going to play right tackle. For me. I don't know if stigma is the appropriate word, but but I'm going to use it anyway. I, I, there's a stigma associated with certain, you know, interior offensive line positions in terms of how high you draft them. Listen, man, if, if you get in Quentin Nelson or anything like that, a Zach Martin type or whatever Doesn't the matter. case may be, I don't Doesn't care. Matter. I don't care that he's a top five pick. I don't care that he's a top three pick if he's that type of player. Now, right. you know, I, I guess you, you just have to kind of understand, you know, how the how the league values them. But you have to do what's best for your team. You know what right. I'm saying? And I'm not suggesting that you move Icky off of tackle. But if the best five looks like Andrew Thomas at left tackle and Quano at left guard, then let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. I don't have a problem with that. But again, right. in this case, we expect Quano to play uh, offensive tackle. All right. So with the sixth overall pick, Austin Gale has the Carolina Panthers selecting Kyle Hamilton, the safety from Notre Dame, incredibly talented player, rangy size. He, he is... He's one of those, you know, kind of test two baby types. Mm-hmm. You know, he doesn't look like he should be doing the things that he does on the field, right? right. The body type doesn't necessarily match up with how fluid he is and, 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 and just his game-changing ability as a last line of defense. But I don't particularly like this pick. And, and that isn't to say that Carolina can't stand to actually improve the safety position. You know, we like Jeremy Chin, of course. And, and they don't really have another guy outside of him currently on that roster that, that you're, you're really comfortable about, you know, going into the season. But but I'm telling you, man, it's really a catch-22 in terms of, OK, do we, do we you know, go with the best player available or do we address the needs? And, and my thought process is, is that while you typically don't want to draft for need, you, you generally want to go best player available. 
when your needs are along the offensive line and at quarterback, I, I think you're compelled to address that part of your football team. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I would agree. And I think I think Carolina is going to end up being a team that's going to have to trade up to get, um, you know, one of the, the, the bigger, better top offensive linemen, I should say. They may not have to because there's, there's a lot. Um, but just in terms of talking about uh, Ecom and, and, um, and Evans, I think, um, you know, they would have, maybe have to trade up to get those guys. But I, listen, I don't like this pick. Uh, this is a team who's drafted defense for the past two years, essentially. Mm-hmm. Their entire drafts have been that. And and I know safety hasn't – a bunch of resources haven't been put into that, right? Um, it's been put mainly in the corner um, yes. and, and the line of scrimmage uh, – the, the defensive line. But the eyesore on this team is quarterback and the offensive line. Like, right. Here you got a chance to get, get you a Charles Cross. Yeah, Tyler Lynn. Like, you, you have a chance to improve – the offensive line and you just kind of we're going to go and, and I get it listen at this point uh, in the draft he might be the best player available oh yeah but you also have offensive linemen who meet your need who are almost I'm going to say not the level of Kyle Hamilton as position but it, it, it's close enough you know what I mean and, and, and again they don't need defense like it's not a it's not something that they need it's you need offensive line it's not like you're saying hey I'm going to draft this this uh this this guard center or this offensive tackle who's you know 50th on my board you sure. know what I mean like sure. and, and Kyle Hamilton right now is number one they got to be in the top ten you know what I mean yeah. and if that that's the case go with the offensive line because it, it meets the need yeah I, I certainly understand what you're saying you, you mentioned the resources that they poured onto the defensive side of the ball I I, I don't see how you can do this from Matt Rule's perspective. Matt Rule was kind of on the hot seat, but but you know apparently he got some grace here. And and to go into this draft class after you know two years ago, every single pick was on the defensive side of the ball, and still have a glaring issue at quarterback. Although they decided to give Sam Darnold the, the fifth year option, we, we just don't know that Sam Darnold will ever develop into what think some think he can become. Um, certainly, he's not going to do so behind that offensive line. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, th- this seems like a luxury pick. As, as talented as Kyle Hamilton is, and, and as I mentioned, they've used draft selections on J.C. Horn most recently, Troy Pride, Keith Taylor. You know, they already had Dante Jackson. They used some of their draft capital to acquire C.J. Henderson. Like, they've done a lot, not just on the defensive side of the ball, but in the secondary. Not safety specifically, but right. again, I, I don't know how you can make this particular pick. Unless, of course... The GM is basically saying, look, I bless you with the Sam Darnold uh, fifth-year option. You're going to have to make that work. I want Kyle Hamilton because I know what kind of player he is. I know that he can be a difference maker on our defense. And, and you know, we want to continue to to approach this by selecting the best player available. You've made your bed, Matt Rule, now lie in it. Maybe that's what we're thinking here, but, yeah, I, I struggle with this one as well. All right, moving right along, we have the New York Giants making their second of two first-round selections. And... And this seems to be, like I said before, I've said in, in the previous mock drafts that we've done, as well as the reaction that we've done, Yo. to George Karloftis being earmarked to the New York Giants. And, and of course, the Giants need to address both sides of the line of scrimmage. The first time around, they get Ika Maquano with the fifth overall pick. Here they get Karloftis with the seventh overall pick. Do you expect on draft night Karloftis to be a New York Giant? Depends on who the coach is, <laughs> man, to be honest with you. I don't really know. I don't know. Maybe Austin Gale knows something. You need to need to need to let us know uh, some way somehow. Uh, if you've seen my my previous mocks, or our previous mocks, I should say, um, had Karloftis going to the Giants as well, and I, I like him for this team. I like what he can do for this team. It's a guy who can play the edge, also can be placed inside. He's a guy who, you know, I was watching some of his tape today. Man, listen, there's, there's two issues that I have with him. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I can live with them because he, he does everything else that you would want from the edge, right? Right. Um, his lateral movement isn't isn't the best. Okay, I, I'll take that. And, and he's not a bendy guy. Yeah, he's not he's not a twitched up guy. He's not a twitched up guy. I'll take that because he gives me everything else I want from the position, right? They even use him in coverage at times, which is silly. But you know, they want to change up the scheme, I get it. Let me let me let me just throw this hypothetical at you. So obviously in Austin Gale's mock draft here, Kyle Hamilton went a pick ahead of this Giants right. selection with Carl Loftus. If the Giants are staring Carl Loftus and Kyle Hamilton at the seventh overall pick, which direction on, do you go man. in? Come on, man. 
I, I got to do it, man. Come on. This is what this is what the audience wants to know. It is. So it, it depends on the defense that I'm running. So okay. if, if, if I'm doing what the Giants have always done, or always done, what they've done in, in the, these Most past recently. few seasons, yep. two high safeties, not going to let anything get behind us, there's no point in drafting Kyle Hamilton because you're wasting him, right? Because because. Mm. You know, we can we can have any safety do that. Do safeties do do those things, right? Uh, you you got to draft Carl Loftus. But if you're telling me you, you're going to play some Lego defense, you're going to move people around pre snap, post snap, uh, you, you're going to um, you know disguise looks and diff- do different things with with your defense, then it's Kyle Hamilton. Okay. All right. So really, what it comes down to is you know who this new coach is, the scheme that they ultimately uh, deploy. And, and being able to maximize the talents of, of the individual players. To, to your point, you know, if, if you're playing a ton of too high um, and, and you're fairly vanilla, then uh, Kyle Hamilton, I imagine, will thrive in, in any scheme, but that's not necessarily getting the value out of a top six, top seven pick at the safety position if that's, if that's what you plan on doing, you know, the majority of the time. All right. Moving right along, we have the eighth overall pick in the Atlanta Falcons. And Austin Gale has him selecting offensive tackle Charles Cross. Cross could very well be the best pass blocking tackle in this class. The, the Falcons have a lot of issues, though. I, I commend Atlanta for making the offensive line a priority, right? They have used a lot of premium draft capital to address their offensive line, to, to stabilize the run game, to protect Matt Ryan. It just hasn't necessarily worked out. You know what I mean? And and apparently Austin Gale is basically like, look, whether it's Matt Ryan or whether it's a, a, a younger or different single caller we got to be able to protect that individual we can't have them running for their life so he goes charles cross here but i'm telling you drew we took a look at at this <laughs> at this roster and, and some of the contract situations and it's Yo. not pretty man oh. it's it, it is not pretty this team was dead last in terms of sacks i mean i i don't think a, a, a 18 i believe 18 you know yeah. the teens you managed the teens worth of yes. sacks um you got handful of young cornerstone talent under contract and like AJ Terrell and Kyle Pitts. But then you get past that and guys like Grady Jarrett could be on the outs, you know, you know, here in a year or so. Like, like there's it, it, it's and then, of course, we talk about the albatross of, of Matt Ryan's contract right now. It's it's tough. It's yeah. tough. We don't know what's going on with Calvin Ridley. This might be an area where, you know, they, they may consider a receiver, but I'm certainly in the mindset that if. If one of those edge rushes, one of those three edge rushes isn't available here for the Falcons, I'm thinking trade down situation. Yeah. Um, I mean, you said it. It's, it's bad. And it's, we was kind of running through it. And I'm just like, I didn't know, you know, it was that bad. Yeah, you know, how with all the contracts it was. expiring. Like, what is the GM doing? Are we going to blow this up? Like, what is the plan? And for me, you got to trade down with all those contracts you guys that, that are going to expire and, you know, are you going to be able to bring those guys back knowing the season that you had? Are they going to want to come back, you know, knowing the season that, that they have and what the team is at the current moment? I think you just got to pull out your, your, your Super Nintendo, your Nintendo, and hit the reset button, bro. Because mm. it's, it's brutal, man. And User quit, man. Yeah. It's a, it's a user quit situation. 21 <laughs> skunk. 21 skunk, man. It, it, it's not pretty. But you know what's crazy is that this team this team was in the thick of it towards yeah. the end of the, the, of the that, season. That's the crazy just, part. They just found a way to scrap and fight. And, but but they're going to be in perpetual limbo if they don't blow that's this the thing, thing up. Like, like that, legit blow this thing up. Yeah, that, that, it, It's, it's yeah. one of two ways. Either you go all in, mm-hmm. which I don't suggest because they don't have enough of the pieces with all the expiring contracts. Or you say, you know what? Let's pump the brakes. Let's stop the bus. Let's unload the kids, and let, let's let's rethink this thing because you're going to be playing a bunch of mediocre football for the next I don't know how many years if you, if you decide hey we're going to go for this thing, or or if you go in there you half ass it, you know what I mean? And and, and you kind of yeah, blow it up, bro. Just yeah, I understand the pick. I like the pick, but it's me. I'm trading down, and obviously this 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 mock doesn't have any trades. But if you got a pick, I, I'm, I'm I'm okay with the pick if if you got a pick. I hear you. All right. Yeah. Next up, Denver Broncos with the ninth overall pick. And we have our first quarterback off the board, Sam Howell of UNC. Now, I wonder, at this juncture in your evaluation, um, I, I, I'll, I'll make no bones about it. I am still very early in my evaluation of these quarterbacks. And frankly, I'm, I'm kind of reluctant to really get into the quarterbacks until after the senior bowl, which we will be attending, by the way. 
Uh, right. For all of you who, who aren't necessarily aware, we do this. We 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 do this over here. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, what, what do you think about Sam Howell landing in Denver? So just in my mind, I'm like, I don't think he's going to go this high, obviously, as of right now. As of right uh, now. As of right now, Senior Bowl, uh, you know, could, could, could catapult him here. Um, I like the player in terms of him going here where he doesn't have to be the man, okay? Um, because there's so many weapons that they have here. I think offensive line is obviously a target for this football team. Um, Sam Howell started off the season rough. It was tough. He lost a bunch of talent on that team. Um, lost games you thought it would have won. And this is one of the teams you actually thought would have gave Clemson a run for their money and probably could have um, taken over the, the ACC for the year, right? And, and they came on, he came on late and had to figure things out. You know what I mean? And it's a guy who's who's a gamer, as we like to say. Um, has a strong arm, carried the football team. Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily like the system that he's coming from because that can, that can pull the wool over your eyes. Sure. Um, but I think going to Denver, you know, where... And who knows who the, who the coach will be there with all the weapons that they have. He doesn't have to be the man. You know what I mean? We can we can we can do that through the running game. We can we can, um, you know, scheme up things so that, you know, he can throw it to the open receiver, get his guys open. Um, and, and if need be, you know, later in the season, maybe he can become that guy. But I, I like the pick. I just not necessarily, you know, and I know it's a mock, obviously. Sure. Um, you know, um, I, I like the pick to Denver, man. The things that that, you know, always tend to play out or more often than not play out is that quarterbacks are are going to be overdrafted right. now now is is sam howell considered overdrafted at the ninth overall pick that that's debatable i i think right. i think you know considering that he lost so much of his supporting cast from 2020 to 2021 i thought the kind of the the, the peaks and valleys associated with unc's play may have hindered him but when you talk about right. playmaking ability as a passer, he's near the top of the list within this class with respect to that aspect. And that is what Denver has been lacking. You know, yes. you, you had you had kind of the steady hand with Teddy Bridgewater, but but you weren't getting any you know, Teddy Teddy wasn't necessarily making you better per se. You right. know, although although, you know, occasionally when we saw Teddy be aggressive and attack down the field, we, we, we saw, you know, what what potentially this Denver offense could be. Mm -hmm. With Drew Locke, there was just too much inconsistency regarding decision making and accuracy to, to to really you know he he has the live arm not unlike sam howe but right. he, he didn't have the the decision making per se nor the accuracy to to really unlock that that supporting cast and and, and those and those perimeter weapons so um th this is actually an interesting mix to me i think i think if denver does end up going quarterback it could very well be sam howe because of his playmaking ability and his willingness to to be aggressive, to be aggressive. And right. I, I'm not sure anybody throws a better deep ball in this class than, than Sam Howell. You know what I mean? And with, with the likes of Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy and Tim Patrick, and they'll get KJ Hamler back. You know what I mean? And I've been calling for them to, to use Noah Fant vertically, use that speed and, and, and right. use him vertically. This this is actually a really interesting pick to me. I, I actually like it quite a bit. You know what I mean? If I'm Denver, I'll probably go after um, Byron Leftwich because that's all the weapons right there. That's that's it right there. I'm just going to say it. So put that out there for Denver fans. Okay. All right. yeah. I, I hadn't considered Leftwich to, to Denver with, with Jacksonville being such close proximity, but I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I, I think that's an interesting match, to your point. Uh, with the 10th overall pick, the New York Jets making the second of two first-round picks. This is a selection it. that they got from Seattle. Yeah, I, yeah, I like it, too. I love it. I, I like it, too. Drake London. They, they go corner with Stingley fourth overall and they come back with London here. Yeah. And, and I've said this before in a previous mock and I'm going to continue to say it. This guy has the potential to be the best receiver coming out because of his ability after the catch ability to, um, you know, just make things happen. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? With the poor quarterback play that he had at USC this past year, obviously he got injured and, you know, it's probably going to hurt his draft stock. We'll see. Uh, I think this dude is special. Man. Like when I turned on the tape, I was like, okay, everybody's saying he's kind of like Mike Evans, which I hate to get, I hate to know what people think about a guy before you go into the tape. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm kind of leaning You don't want your the... opinion colored You're right. based on right. somebody else's comp or whatever the case may yeah, be. Yeah, when I was watching yeah. the tape, though, bro, I just came by with the with the hand off the the, 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 the eraser, and I just... Yeah. All that. Just because because I, I saw a different type of player. I understand where they were I coming agree. from because of, of the size. He got some smoothness to him. 
He's got ability to break people off in terms of his route, that 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 ability after the catch, the ability to go up and get the football. Like, oh, man, and, he's, and again, he's reliable, which is what Zach Wilson needs for the Jets, which I don't know that he had this year. And I know barring, you know, they had injuries all over the place in terms of all those receivers for the Jets. But this is a guy who can turn things around very, very quickly for the Jets in terms of the the, um, the receiver position. You know who he kind of reminds me of a little bit. This, this, I don't know. I don't know that anybody has necessarily made this particular comp, but he kind of reminds me of Brandon Marshall, but with softer hands. You know what I'm saying? You know like that that, that can that can do some damage. You know, yeah. a bigger bigger frame, right? But can do some right. damage after he catches the football. Once he becomes a ball carrier, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and if you pepper him with targets, he's gonna punish the opposition. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You're right. I, I see. I see elements of Mike Evans as well but but he is a different player particularly once he becomes a ball carrier you know yep. next up the Washington football team also going quarterback with Matt Corral of Ole Miss you are our resident SEC guy what, what do you think about this selection he kind of falls in the same category as a, as a Sam Howell a guy who's 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 a gamer who's going to uh, bring the best out in his team in terms of the the players that are out there. He's a smaller, it's not not as big, a smaller guy. Um, but you know, for me, you know, that stuff doesn't really matter in terms of the quarterback position. Can you can you can you read the defense? Can you get the football down the field? Can you make the right decision? And and he can do that. Um, and playing for the Washington football team, I don't think quarterback was an issue. Um, but I understand that they're probably going to be in the market for a quarterback. And at the end of the day. Ron Rivera wants his guy in there, and I understand the pick. I think if Washington goes quarterback, I think they need to be aggressive about who they want. I okay. think I think they need to be the team, you know, that get their number one get, guy. Yeah, try try perhaps to get in front of Denver potentially. Right. You know, and who knows how it'll actually work out with respect to free agency and how that changes the playing field here. But I think Washington needs to be aggressive if they're going to go to quarterback route. They need to be aggressive about it and 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 be the first team to select the quarterback, which in all likelihood will require them to move up into the top 10. And, and I think with the 11th overall pick, they should be able to get that done without obviously mortgaging the entire future. You understand what I'm saying? So, so yeah, I, I, Corral is an interesting player. He's an exciting player. You know, he, he's, a, he's an excitable player as well. He's going to bring some juice. To this organization uh, but but i have some question marks in terms of in terms of c- consistency i like i said before I'm, I'm still very early in in my evaluation and unfortunately we're not going to be able to see corral at the senior bowl because he yeah. suffered an injury during the um bowl game that yeah. Ole Miss participated in but um it, it, it'll really be interesting as i continue to churn through the tape see kind of where he ultimately lands among the quarterbacks in the 2022 nfl draft class next up with the 12th overall pick the Minnesota Vikings, Austin Gale has him selecting Ahmad Gardner from Cincinnati. Now, Sauce Gardner position, I think everybody agrees. You know, Tough. Viking fan, uh, Packer fan, <laughs> Lion you know fan. what I'm saying? Lion fan. Everybody agrees <laughs> that the Vikings need to address the cornerback position. Uh, it's a matter of ultimately who that corner is going to be. So in this particular mock, uh, Stingley's off the board. And the next corner that comes off the board here is Ahmad Gardner. Your thoughts? Yeah, and, and they're not, listen, whoever they draft, you know, assuming they draft a corner, these corners aren't so far apart from each other. Yes. You know what yes, I mean? It, this will, I think this will come down to when we bring them in to the organization to, you know, sit them down, have a, have a conversation with them. I think it'll come down to that at the end of the day. Um, when you're talking about Gardner, you're talking about Stingley, you're talking about Culture um, Fit. Yep. You're talking about yep. Elam, you're talking about um, McCurry. Like when you're talking about those top corners, I think that um, it'll just come down to, to that, obviously, because I think all of them are um, outstanding players and, and guys who are going to contribute immediately for their football teams. And, you know, Gardner is the guy with, with the numbers. I mean, let's be real. He's the guy with the numbers. No touchdowns have been scored on him in his entire collegiate co- uh, career. And um, just so y'all know, Juice got a, got a, you dropped a video today. I did. Uh, well, I guess, well, by the time we drop this, it won't be today. It won't be today. It won't be today. You know, you know the video is there to go check out the scouting reports, the top five, or what, uh, what do you call it? The top five plays? Oh, that's five plays. We just the scouting report just, five just, plays. Just, just the scouting report in, in five plays um, of Gardner, man. And, and you just think he's this, this, this cover corner guy is a little mm-hmm. bit more than that. That's mm-hmm. all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it there. Mm-hmm. The, the, the tape, the tape revealed a dog. 
Yes. You understand what I'm saying? And and there is a reason why. There's a reason why Gardner has had so much success and, and he's been so stingy in terms of in terms of allowing completions, you know, in his primary coverage. And and it, it it's not because of phenomenal technique. It, it's it, it really it's isn't. It's definitely it's not really that. isn't, man. It, no. It's it, now mind you, he has all the traits. He has right. all the traits. He's he's pushing six threes. He's gonna be he's gonna measure between six two, six three in all likelihood, you know. Right. And and he can fly. He can fly. He he's not just kind of a a long strider. You know what I'm saying? He's put he's picking them up and putting them down. Yep. But but the hustle, man. Like I typically don't use the term motor with cornerback. I, I don't know that anybody uses the yeah, term so. motor with yeah, a cornerback position. Right. But but that's that's that kind of en- encompasses Gardner's game. It's that the the reason why he's so difficult to complete passes against, and the reason why he's never given up a touchdown in his college career, is because he never quits on a play. Yeah. Even when the receiver's in, in better position, even when the receiver, you know, seemingly has made the play, Gardner's still fighting, and lo and behold, you know, he, he rips the ball out of there. It's a pass breakup. You know what I'm saying? To the very end. To the very end. Until until after the whistle blows, yeah. Mark Gardner's still fighting. Sauce Gardner's still fighting. All right. Moving right along with the 13th pick, the Cleveland Browns. They certainly have a need at receiver, and, and this is the receiver that I have earmarked for them as well, Austin Gale, in my opinion. Hit the nail on the head with Garrett Wilson of Ohio State. Spectacular after the catch, I, like Special. listen, I'm, he's Special. <laughs> that's his that that's his um his thing. But again, he's coming from and I'm probably gonna say this a thousand times every time we do a mock with with him and and, and the other receiver coming out of there. Is it coming from wide receiver? You um, polished uh, polished player. Brian Hartline. Um, Brian Hartline. Um, you know, maybe he'll be a head coach some some someday. We'll see, uh, but. This this is a need. This is a huge need. This is where we talk about uh, need meets the um, board. The board. Yep. Like, period. <laughs> Just pull, don't even, there's no time to waste. We don't need to think about a trade. None of that. Just go up there and get this guy because Baker Mayfield what, is, is going to be in his, his last year of his contract. You need to make sure, is he the guy we want? No excuses because we know it isn't the offensive line and we know it isn't the running, the running game. So, we're going we to give you what you need so that way, if it fails, we know we did everything we needed to do to confirm that you're not the guy. And adding a Garrett Wilson will do that. Definitely. Definitely. I, I wrote a piece for NFL Mocks comparing Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave in, in, mm-hmm. in three three prongs of a play, right? You know, before the catch, at the catch point, and after the catch. And at the catch point, after the catch, Garrett Wilson is okay. is special, man. He's special. And and. and as far as his route running, don't sleep on it. Don't sleep on it. With the 14th pick, the Baltimore Ravens are on the clock, and they too are going corner. So now we're starting to see a little bit of a run at the corner position. We we expect as many as five corners perhaps going in the first round of the 2022 NFL Draft. Um, I don't know that this name has necessarily been associated with the Ravens quite this early in mock drafts. This is the first time I'm seeing Trent McDuffie this high out of Washington. Your, your thoughts with McDuffie going 14th overall? Uh, I like it <laughs> um, because if you're going to play for the Ravens, you got to be able to come up and <laughs> take <laughs> away the sure. run. That's and McDuffie sure. has that in spades. And this is a guy who I think that would match well for what they want to do on defense. You know, want to kind of leave you out there on an island. It's the guy who has no issue with doing that. I prefer him in zone coverage or off off man. Um, you know, and, and I think I'm not sure in terms of how the Ravens, I think they kind of let the corners do what they want to do. If you want to press and, and push and do all that, you can. But if you want to play off a little bit, you can do that. And McDuffie, because of his click and close, um, he can play off and he, he can he can close in a hurry. And I know, you know, Raven fan is probably screaming offensive line, offensive line, offensive line. And I get it. Uh, but not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not, I don't not, think not so. I think that's us. Oh, that's us. Okay. I think that's okay. us, man. Well, uh, listen, let us know down in let us know down in the comments section. Uh, where would you go here? Would you go corner? Is this the corner you would go with? You go corner, or would sure. you go offensive line? And where would you go at this point in terms of offensive line? And and by the way, pause for a second. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Okay. Yeah, do that. Appreciate you. You know, McDuffie's interesting here. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, when when I think the Ravens, when I think of the Ravens, I think. You know, zero blitz. Yep. <laughs> cover one. Man, coverage. Little cover one. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're really on an island. And it, it, that isn't to say that McDuffie cannot play in that type of scheme. But you mentioned it. I think when his eyes are on the quarterback, 
Mm-hmm. I think he's at his best. You understand what I'm saying? So unless the Ravens are, are going to be doing a philosophical, you know, shift, a complete 180, which I do not anticipate, I'd be a little surprised if they, they opt for McDuffie over the likes of Kyrie Elam or perhaps, you know, my guy, Roger McCreary. Probably a little too early for most folks in terms of Roger McCreary, but I think he's a dog. Um, and even Andrew Booth played a lot of a lot of zone, like an overwhelming amount of zone in Clemson. But I just think from a traits perspective, Booth might actually be better suited for this. I, I think the Ravens, in terms of their existing roster, they need to come to an agreement with Anthony Averett. I thought he played really well this year. I thought he played really well this year. He's slated to be an unrestricted free agent. He, of course, got hurt at the end of the season. So perhaps you were able to get him, you know, with the hometown discount. You know what I'm saying? The Ravens are the team that gave him an opportunity. He wasn't necessarily the most, you know, heralded corner coming out of Alabama. And and when he's played and, and he became a full-time starter, he's been really effective for the Ravens. So I think they need to do that. They can still go to the well here at corner. But, of course, you and I have the mindset that that they got to figure out what's going on along that offensive line. You know what I'm right. saying? Again, again, the value of the board may not necessarily match up at this point, but in all likelihood, we'll see Eric DaCosta trade down. That, that's, you know, you know, he comes from the school of Ozzie Newsom, so, so he probably trade down. It, it, it's, it's best player available. It's best player available, <laughs> or right? Trade down. Or trade down. You know what I'm saying? So that I, I think that's ultimately where the Ravens go. But, but we do like McDuffie. With the 15th overall pick, the Eagles, they have a trifecta of selection, and this is their first one. We mentioned Kyrie Elam. He's landing here. In Philadelphia, gonna play opposite Darius Slay. I think I think they can form a very formidable pair. What about you? So th- this is where I think that the picks should have been flipped. Mm. Elam should have gone went to the to the Ravens, and I think McDuffie should have went. Yeah, because the, the Eagles play over well and over. Zone. Yeah, like it's, yeah, they play it's a lot of I zone. mean, they play more zone than any any team in the league, and it's it's almost to a detriment how how right. much they play zone because they don't want anything to get over top over you know, and they'll play the dink and dunk game right, and not that Elam can't play zone, he can obviously he's one of the top corners, but I think if you if you want to get the best out of him, you want to get everything yes. the, the the whole shebang, he's got to be in a scheme where. He's doing both man and zone, but predominantly he's playing man, man coverage, being physical, Press. rerouting yep. the receiver. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Controlling the the the, um, the the receiver in front of him, right? And you can't necessarily do that. I guess you can do that in zone, but it's to a certain extent, right? Correct. Correct. There's limitations uh, to it. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, let me say this, Eagle fans, since, since they got the next pick, which is which is another defensive pick. Listen, this is a team for me. If I'm an Eagles fan, I know people, you know, they, they lost that playoff game and everybody's killing uh, Hurts and, and you know, the, the play calls and, and this, that, and the other. This defense has a problem. It has a big problem, and you can't just sit back and play zone and allow teams to dink and dunk you all the way down the field, and then you want to kind of play, uh, what, do they, what do we call it, uh, don't, don't, uh, bend, don't break all the way down the football field all the time. Yeah. You got to have some variety. Like, you can't be cornflakes every morning, bro. I need Fruit Loops. I need Honey Nut Cheerios. I need Frosted Cheerios. I need Frosted Flakes. You know what I'm saying? Maybe some Special K. It can't be just cornflakes every morning. Like, it, that's insane to me. It's absolutely insane to me, especially for a team that wants to – well, I guess it matches what they want to do. They want to run the football and, and throw it occasionally. And I just – there's just not enough variety – for this team, I think that this is a team who needs to add some spice, some guys who attack, uh, come downhill attack, and are, are willing to, to lay it on the line instead of sitting back and just kind of being passive, man. I hate I hate it. Like, if, if I was a Philadelphia fan, I would hate our defense. Regardless of what type of defense, what type of scheme you employ predominantly, whether it be man or, or zone coverage, if, if you're not able to affect the passer, you, you, you're somebody's going to figure you out. There are, there are too many good quarterbacks in the NFL. You're eventually going to be figured out. So, you know, as much as they they can use a corner opposite Darius Slay, they're, they're kind of in, 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 of course, they have the draft capital. Let's make no mistake about it. They're kind of in no man's land because they have some, some changes that are probably going to take place along the defensive line. You know, uh, Brandon Graham, you know, is, is longer in the twos coming off of an injury. He may not necessarily be back. Derek Barnett's going to be an unrestricted free agent. Fletcher Cox, of course, isn't quite the same player that he once was. You know what I'm saying? So, so they have some issues along there as well. But, but I agree with your original point. You know, the, the, these corners, McDuffie and Elam, in all likelihood, likelihood, should have been flipped. 
16th overall pick. We're halfway through. Austin Gale's mock draft, writer for PFF. Nicobe Dean. I think this is a bit of a layup here. You know what I mean? The, the, the second level of the Philadelphia Eagles defense is, has been an eyesore for an extended period of time. You know, whether, whether it be Devin Lloyd or, or Dean, whomever you have first, I don't think you can go wrong with either player. Dean, Dean strikes me as really good athlete, really instinctive player with a superior football IQ. You know, high, high football IQ. And at the second level, you know, the, the, the guy with the, with the green dot on the helmet calling the plays and stuff, this is, this is who you want. This is who you want. You can do everything well. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and again, if you're going to draft this guy, I need you, you, you got to have some plays for him. You got to have him coming sure. downhill on occasion. You got to set things up for him so he can be successful. But please, and, and and yes, he can sit back in zone. He can play zone. He can get to the spots that maybe the linebackers you have currently on the roster cannot get to. But please don't draft this man to do to do what you've been doing. Please. To, 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 to run with the tight end down the seam and cover right. two? You see, that's not what you want? No. Come don't, on. You don't want him running down the seam? No. Getting, under, that's... getting underneath? Getting underneath the tight end? That's not what you want? Don't do it. <laughs> so if that's the case, if that's what we plan on doing, then you, you need to go uh, edge player here or defensive line, period. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, with the next pick. I mentioned Devin Lloyd, the, the Los Angeles Chargers. And, and you know what, Drew? I really like this pick. The Chargers, as we know, struggle to stop the run. I, I think they are also in a prime spot to perhaps trade down a, a team, a playoff team, or a team that's just outside the playoffs um, that may be interested in, in finding kind of their future at the quarterback position. This might be a good spot for them to trade down. But, of course, that takes two. If not... I, I, I kind of like the pick of Devin Lloyd here. I, I've been unimpressed by Kenneth Murray. Um, I don't know if you saw Uchenna Nwosu this year. He, he looked like a man amongst boys. You know, I know, you know, Bosa and Derwin James get a lot of attention, but Nwosu yeah, was really him. good this year. But th- right. their their struggles in terms of stopping the run are, are well documented. And, of course, Lloyd is one of those guys who, you know, is a quintessential three-down linebacker. He can do it all. There's nothing, there's nothing that he can't do. Green Dog. Downhill, sideline to sideline, pass coverage, man coverage. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't, right. it doesn't matter. And and I think he brings a certain level of explosion that that Dean doesn't quite bring. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And, and and I think that's why as of right now, I give Lloyd a slight edge. But but to me, that they're incredibly close. And you know, I, we've done a previous mock draft, and and I I was drafting for the Eagles, and I took <laughs> I took Lloyd and, and Dean back to back. You know what I'm saying? Because I like both those players so much. But I, I think this is a great pick for the Chargers. There's a there's a level of of um of violence that he brings yes. more than than what what Dean does. Yeah, Dean to, Dean's a bit more cerebral, right? He's a little bit more cerebral. Yes, right. Um, and and usually with this pick you see in mocks, usually um, I've seen it a couple of times with Lloyd, but most of the time what I see is you know is it is a defensive tackle or defensive mm-hmm. um, edge player here. Um, you know, because we, we know that there's, there's, they're soft up the middle. Sweet. Um, yeah, sweet. Right. Um, yeah. And so they got to stop the bleeding and mm-hmm. it's either you do it at the second level or you do it at the first level. You know what I mean? So, and I, I, I like the pick. I wonder if, you know, if this is the pick, I, I would assume they took care of business, um, in terms of the, the, uh, the trenches, um, in free agency. And, and I, I, I don't think it's something that you cannot address a little bit later. You know, I, again, right. I mentioned that they may decide to, to trade down and still perhaps grab your boy. The big interior defensive lineman that is most commonly associated with the first round is, is Jordan Davis. Of course, he could go a long way in terms of shoring up your run, but perhaps the value with the 17th overall pick isn't quite there because of what he doesn't necessarily bring as far as a pass rush. So, you know, I, I'm, you, you want to keep it clean for Lloyd. You know what I'm saying? You want you want to keep it clean for Lloyd. So you got to figure that part of it out as well. But right. assuming they make the pick here, I, I think if they get Lloyd, that, that is a big step in the right direction in, in terms of improving your run defense. Right. With the 18th overall pick, Austin Gale has the New Orleans Saints selecting Desmond Ritter. And, and this this suggests that that they don't have their quarterback. The Jameis Winston experiment is over. The Taysom Hill experiment is over. A resetting as far as their quarterback position is concerned. What do you think about Ritter here? And 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 of course, what do you think about them not necessarily addressing this receiver position? Because we 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 have been very uh, vocal about the Saints' inability to find a consistent threat outside of Michael Thomas. And of course, Michael Thomas apparently is in the wind. 
Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, you're disgusted, that, bro. Yeah, that, that dude in the way, that's a strange guy. If if they don't go receiver, they have to go quarterback, mm. right? Um, and, and again, like you said, it's assuming that they they didn't bring back Jameis, or maybe they bring back Jameis, but they're not sure. So hey, we're just gonna we're, we're still gonna draft that quarterback. I, I don't know. I see a scenario where they bring back Jameis and, and draft the quarterback. So if they don't draft the receiver, it has to be a quarterback. Um, you know, Ritter. I, I watched the tape. I, I don't. I know he has a nice arm. Mm-hmm. I just don't. I can't. Some players, when I look at him, I just. You don't get excited. He just, like, doesn't move the needle. Doesn't move he, the needle, needle for you. And, and and part of it might be for me is. You watch a quarterback. You watch a quarterback. All right, I got it. I'm good. I'm good. I wrote my notes. Or let me just say a player in, t- in terms of a position. And then you go to the next player in that same position, and. It just doesn't click for me in terms of watching and 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 just it. I got to go back and watch the tape. Right? I can't give you. I just know he has a nice arm, and, and I know he carried his football team to the playoffs. And, and you know, I don't, I don't know who would have thought they was going to win that game. Um, you know, because they they had a like a cupcake schedule. The schedule it is what it is, but they won. What they go undefeated? You know what yep. I mean? So, um, but I, I'm I'm not seeing it right. And and, and obviously he's going to be at the Senior Bowl, and I'm going to have some some boxes that I'm going to need to get checked off. And maybe I catch those, you know, when I go back and watch um, more of this year, maybe I'll be able to check those boxes that, that are missing at the moment. Um, but I just got more, more to look at, but just in terms of the position, I, I get it. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I'm, I'm with you there. I'm with you there. It, it, it kind of, it's kind of a two position discussion here which is, with respect to the saints, you know, they, they, they have an issue in terms of their perimeter weapons and of course they need to figure out long term what they want to do at quarterback you know what i'm saying are, are, are you going to give the reins to Jameis winston because i don't i i'm of the mindset that Taysom hill is not the guy i, I, no, I know you, you feel can't. the same way i i, I think Taysom Taysom hill used in that swiss army type of role is a nice nice accent nice touch you know right. what i'm saying making him you know your primary signal caller on the other hand i, I don't i don't it, i don't think it's gonna get done especially when you have a defense that's built to win now you know what i'm saying you missed out you missed out. Of course, you can't control the fact that Jameis got hurt, right? But, but you miss out on on capitalizing on what is what is becoming, which is actually a nice blend of younger players and veteran players on the defensive side of the ball. As for, as for Ritter specifically, games where you, you really get excited about some of the tools and some of the things that he does, you know, whether it be eye manipulation, um, ball placement, processing, and then there are other games where I'm like, what's going on, you know? And and frankly. It, it's difficult for me to say that that Ritter carried the team, perhaps at times, perhaps at times. But yeah. there's a ton of NFL talent on oh, the yeah, yeah, definitely. roster. There's definitely. a ton. Let's let's not make let's not. It's not one of those situations where like Ritter just played out of his mind and carried a bunch of Jags. Yeah. You know what no, I'm saying? No, no, you know, no, no definitely not is, that. This is a quality football team and, and a well coached football team as well with Luke Fickle. We're moving right along here, and we have. Philadelphia making their third pick, 19th overall, and Austin Gale of PFF has them selecting the speedster, Jamison Williams from Alabama. Yeah, and, and <clears throat> my, my assumption here is this is the, the regular replacement. <laughs> um, boy, them Eagles fans, ooh, they, they put that man up on a cross. He's a uh, new Nelson Aguilar, man. <laughs> but it might be worse. He's a new Nelson Aguilar in Philly, bro. But it could be worse. <laughs> Yeah. And, and, and and what makes it worse is they had a chance to draft Justin Jefferson and they chose Reger, right? So <laughs> that's the thing. So that's the replacement here. For me, I'm not – offense is not a concern for me. Outside of the play calling, I should say, it's not sure. a concern for me. And, yep. and the, the maturation of uh, Jalen Hurts. Uh, but part of that maturation might be due to play calling, right? So those things may go hand in hand. But – I'm going defense, but I gotta fix the defense. I gotta fix the defense. But I, I like the player in Jameson Williams. I, I like what he's what he's bringing to the table. This is a guy who came from Ohio State, wide receiver. You so you know he's got a little bit of mm, in him. You know what I mean? Just couldn't couldn't get on the field, and, and you can understand why at, at, uh, on that team. And he came to Bama, and he made the team, and uh, he's you know he became a starter, and and he blew up in the last couple of weeks of the season. You know, and, and he started to come on. You're like, okay, can he be a guy? I don't know. Is he just a speed guy? Nah, B. Nah, nah, nah. 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 He, he's more than that, and yeah. and it's, it's it's a damn shame that um he, t- he tore his ACL in the mm-hmm. in the in the uh, championship game. So that's unfortunate. Yeah. But 
Um, I understand the pick and I, I get it. Um, I just, I don't think I would go, I don't think I'd go offense with the first three picks at all. Yeah, I, I, I certainly understand where you're coming from. Um, but, but of course, you, you want to put your young quarterback in, in a position to be successful. You want to give him sure. every opportunity to, to succeed. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a strong believer in, in listen, if all else fails, throw it to number six. Devontae Smith is a beast, man. You know what I mean? But, but certainly, you, you got to have other options outside of him and Goddard in that passing game. So it, it, it really depends. It really depends. I, I like the first two picks. If, if you've done a good job of addressing your, your defensive line, particularly the pass rush and free agency, then, then a Jamison Williams at this juncture, you know, certainly makes sense at, at, at this point, Consider it, assuming those things are already in place, right? With the 20th overall pick, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers, who obviously uh, no longer have Ben Roethlisberger. He's retiring and, and not a moment too soon. We, we, we think, well, we, 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 we didn't even man. think the Pittsburgh was going to make the... the the playoffs and there I mean, they I, go. It was, it was a crime. That was a crime against humanity, bro. <laughs> let let in Pittsburgh. Anyway, anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna beat them up too much right. because they they went out very rough. Let's let's, let's yeah. leave it at that. No uh, surprise though. Nobody's yes. surprised. No, not at all. Not at all. Austin Gale has the Steelers selecting Kenny Pickett as yeah. Offersberger replacement out of Pittsburgh. What are your thoughts about Pickett? I, I like Pickett. Uh, I, I guess I'm gonna say this about every one of the quarterbacks um, that we, <laughs> that have come up. All, all those guys are gamers. All those guys will their will their teams to win. Although I think it had a couple of couple of guys I think that are gonna um, gonna probably get drafted from that offense. But um, this is a guy who came Addison. out of nowhere. Addison. Definitely. Addison. Addison. Yeah, yeah definitely. 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 Um, this is a guy who kind of came out of nowhere. This is a guy who did the Joe Burrow. You know what I mean? Where you didn't really expect, and then next thing you know, he's 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 um he's tallying up the, the the stat sheet, and you know it's a guy who who can go through his progressions, um, like you like to say uses the the entire field, all of it. Um, you know, and, and a guy who's who's athletic enough to get outside the pocket, either extend the play or hey, I'm gonna go run and get this first down and get these couple of yards. Doesn't doesn't make mistakes, um, and and, and you know he's improved himself every year he's played, man. So. Um, I think this is a match made in heaven for Pittsburgh, to be honest with you. And they gotta stop stop the 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 the, the bullshit and and throwing third and fourth and fifth and eighth round picks at these quarterbacks and just go get a guy that that you know can be your future. Cut cut the bullshit. Stop it. Yeah, yeah. Effectively, Austin Gale has four quarterbacks coming off the board in the first 20 selections. Yeah. And you know, the fourth quarterback to this point in my evaluation is the guy that I like the most. Perhaps he doesn't have the highest ceiling, but right. just you alluded to it, and rather you mentioned it. You know, I love the way he uses the entire field. He scans the entire field. He uses his eyes to to move defenders. There's a there's a maturity, and that's what you would expect from a fifth year guy. You know what I'm saying? That there's a maturity in term and a presence associated with with his his approach, where where other guys seem a little bit more helter skelter. You know what I'm saying? There, there's a calmness that that invokes a certain level of confidence. You know, in terms of in terms of his play. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna really, really get really critical with respect to his film here as we get closer and closer to the Senior Bowl and watching closely as he handles that whole process. But um, to this point, to this point, Kenny Pickett is my top quarterback, and and certainly getting him with the 20th overall pick, slide him in there, but but make no mistake about it, even with Pittsburgh making the playoffs, they, they have some work to do. Their, their offensive line is poor, and uh, Deontay Johnson got to be a little bit more better with them hands, man. I mean, he's always open. He does a great job of, of getting open, but, but he's got to catch the football more consistently here. Moving right along, let's keep it going. With the 21st pick, the New England Patriots also addressing the, on the offensive side of the ball, they have a big need at receiver. They need this playmaking ability. They need playmaking ability. And the guy that, that Austin Gale has them selecting in Traylon Burks from Arkansas certainly can make plays. Yeah, and and listen, you 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 saw what happened in the playoffs. I mean, they got boat raced. Yes, they did. Like, damn. Yes, they, 40 like, they burger. Didn't, listen, 40, they didn't, 40 burger. They they got they got um they got shanked. Oh. They got smud stomped and oh. they, they got it all and they couldn't stop the bleeding. And this is what I talk, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to talk about in terms of the Patriots. You got to surround Mac your, Jones. Your, your traditional drop back quarterback and Mac Jones with talent. 
not just guys that can you can hand the ball off to and guys who can be a, a safety valve. You need a guy who can make plays when the ball's in his hands and where and he'll be where he's supposed to be. Hmm. And that is Traylon Burks. That dude's special. Yeah. And I have a feeling he's gonna end up being the first receiver off the board because he's gonna destroy the combine. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm in the same boat with you. Uh, th there are more polished players in this particular class at the position, but just the, the the sheer amount of raw talent that Traylon Burks has, and and he's not so raw that that you know you're just worried about him being able to consistently separate. He right. he's one of those guys that you get him the football, a la Debo Samuel. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Get him the football, let him do work. And he's not fighting the football. You understand what I'm saying? When you do throw it to him, he, he's not fighting the football. He, he's a natural pass catcher. He just needs some refinement in terms of, you know, getting in and out of his breaks, sinking the hips, this, that, and the other. But he's a freight train, man. And he's and he he gets zero to 60 real quick at 6'3", 225. You know what I mean? It's 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 a little scary. I The guy that I, I typically, I well, I, I, I saw a comp that I actually really like with respect to Traylon Burks, and I, and I keep reiterating it is is kind of a crossbreed between aj brown and dk metcalf he has that kind of you know physical yeah. prowess and skill set that that's just scary that's just scary interestingly enough man I, I think i think in addition to adding weapons in new england josh mcdaniels has to do a better job and and the reason why i say that is because you cannot pay john U. smith you know boatloads of cash and him have 37 grabs yeah. He just too too rarely utilized. Same thing with 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 Henry. Henry. Same yeah. thing with Henry. Like like I thought, okay, well, you're gonna run this thing through the tight ends, but that wasn't necessarily the case. You know what I'm saying? I, I just I, I'd like to see Josh McDaniels, and, and hopefully, you know, if he does get a guy, land a guy like Traylon Burks, he uses him to you know, the full extent of his abilities, and and really unlocks all of that talent. Next up, the Las Vegas Raiders with the 22nd overall pick. Austin Geller has him selecting Chris Olave. Perhaps the smoothest route runner in this class. Alave has put up a lot of production, a lot of production in Ohio State, and the Raiders certainly have a need here. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, a lot of people are having you know speed guys kind of go, um, you know, to replace the the, the rugs loss that they had. But mm -hmm. you know, Chris Olave is a guy you, you can count on. He's reliable. He's going to be where he's supposed to be, as you want your receiver to be. Like you said, he's smooth, most polished guy coming out. Um, he will go up and get the football. Not, not to say that, that that's not his game. Um, yeah. There's another guy I'd probably go here. I know. Another guy, but he's, 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 he's towards the bottom here. But I, I I don't hate it. I just would, would have went with a different type of receiver with a little bit more flash, dash, and pizzazz, if you will. Yeah, I, I think ultimately what you're looking for here in, in, in a receiver is a guy who – who's really going to back the safeties off, right? That yes. that's that's a part of this particular pick at the receiver positions game that you you got to have. That that's what the, the the Raiders were missing, you know, without Rugs in the lineup. Of course, you know, the Brian Edwards situation hasn't necessarily played out. Of course, you really like what you have with respect to Renfro. You get a healthy Darren Waller back. You need a guy who's really going to be able to to score from anywhere on the field and and really really make it easier for everybody else because of what he can do in terms of blowing the top off the defense. Of course, they were using Zay Jones in that capacity. And and right. while Zay Jones, you know, his, his he, he had an admirable effort, that's not necessarily his specialty. You understand what I'm saying? So so then you look at Olave, who I think I think he brings a little bit more in terms of, you know, being able to back the safeties off. Not as much as as perhaps you want in this right. pick. But but I think that's an underrated aspect of his game in terms of being able to stack defensive backs and 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 really back safeties off, you know. And and I think what ends up happening with Alave is that you know he he gets up on the toes of the defensive back and then he snaps it off on an out and yeah. it's and it's it's a first down almost every single time. All right. Next up, the Arizona Cardinals drafting your favorite, the yeah. best offensive lineman in the class at any position as yeah. far as Drew's concerned. Tyler Linderbaum of Iowa, the wrestler man. Did, did you see the? Um, it was a it was a, a video um, going around with of, Tristan Wirfs. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. wrestling. Yeah, yeah you know, beat yeah. him like, all right, bro. Yeah. Hey, Y'all have to show that. You know that's a bad boy. That's yeah, a bad boy. A bad boy because Tristan Wirfs is all pro in year two. 
Yeah, man. He should have been. He could have been all pro in year one. Last just, year. You know what I'm saying? That's I just true. hate it. You know what I mean? Gave up one sack and. Uh, well, anyways. Um, <laughs> and we talked about this before. People were saying that, you know, they wanted Linda Bob to be. He could have he won the Heisman, should have got some votes, all those things. Uh, but listen. Uh, this is a this is a a must need for the Arizona Cardinals. Um, you know, I, I think the biggest problem with this team, honestly, is scheme. You know, oh, yeah. play calling. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean. And, and I don't know. You know, Linda Bottom will help. We're, um, we're looking at I, you, Cliff Kingsbury. Yes. We're looking at you. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, because he just he just pick and plays, bro. It, there was no rhyme reason of what's going <laughs> on. It was it was terrible. Uh, and um, I guess the run game didn't exist uh, this past Sunday. I guess I guess we just and, and that's just exactly how you and that's how you attack the Rams. You run yeah, the ball. right, right, yeah. right, right. Uh, but Lindenbaum is a baller. Uh, he's a guy who just it's a plug and play player. It's a guy who's going to take charge. That's what you want from your center position. Uh, easy mover guy who's going to take no you know what from anybody. Um, you know, and he was a wrestler, and we know how wrestlers are at the offensive line. They're very talented, athletic, easy movers, um, and. Um, good feet. Um, I, know, I know he's a little light, he's a little mm-hmm. light, but again, you kind of want your center to be that way. You don't necessarily want this guy to be a, a statue in the center of your um, your offensive. Yeah, I think uh, interestingly enough, with with this particular selection and Linderbaum landing in Arizona, you, you already have the incumbent there at center, Rodney Hudson, who who has been a very very effective center for a long time in the NFL. Yep. He he is under contract for the next couple of seasons. Do do you do you? play Linderbaum at guard during the interim because yep. he does have that flexibility. Yep. Um, I think I think ultimately that's what you do here because they, they definitely, they definitely have issues along the interior offensive line at either guard position in Arizona. So so this, this is this is a nice pick. And then of course ultimately you can slide right into the center position when Rodney Hudson exits stage left. All right. Next up is the Dallas Cowboys with the 24th overall pick. And I actually love this selection. I love this selection, you know Depending on on who you're talking to, Andrew Booth may be the second rated cornerback or he might be the fifth rated quarterback yep. in the class, the cornerback in this class. So so getting him here at, with the 24th overall pick in Dallas, I, I know Dallas has a lot of corners, but again, with with, you know, roster turnover and attrition. One thing that that this particular season, especially in, in the era of, of the pandemic, has shown is that you need depth at the cornerback position. And Andrew Booth, man, he, he is a special athlete. He's a special athlete. What do you like about Booth? And, and what do you think about the fit in Dallas? Swag, ball skills. You already have a corner on the other side who has ball skills. So let's just go ahead. Ball skills on one side, ball skills on the other side. Although one's a little bit more aggressive than the other, I think. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's just 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 a tad bit. Just a tad bit. Just, just a yeah. tad bit. Um, but I, I I like the selection. I do like the the, the fit for Dallas. You, you had talked about this this team having a uh, you know a bunch of bunch of corners, a bunch of DBs, and and you know it. it... They got to draft the corner, bro. Yes, yes, they, they got absolutely. Draft the like like absolutely. They they, they 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 have to. It's 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 not a. Um, you know, I, oh, well, you know what? They could have gone off the line too, because that that appears that that yeah. appears to be an issue for them. Yeah, I I think you know I'm of the mindset that if you move Lyle Collins at, into left guard, you kick Connor Williams out to right tackle. You good? You, you might you might be good. I've been okay. calling them for that for a few years, but okay. you know uh, people are spoiled. The, the, the Dallas Cowboys had a dominant offensive line for the better part of ten years, and and now with Tyron Smith. You know, dealing with injury and, and slowing down a little bit. They've had, a, you know, a little bit of turnover as far as the left guard position um, and the right tackle position. You got Terrence Steele in there as well. Even if you wanted this position sure. to say no more Connor Williams, Terrence Steele made a huge jump from one year to the next playing right tackle. Um, like I said, kick Lyle Collins into guard and, and, and you got you working with something. So I don't think it's as as dire, but you do need to think about the future, particularly at left tackle. I think you do need to right. think about the future with respect to that. Tyron Smith, like I said, has been oh, phenomenal. He's been phenomenal for such a long time, but but the injuries are starting to catch up to him. It, yeah. it, it's, it's starting to affect his play. As, as for Booth landing in Dallas, you know, I think we saw peak Anthony Brown. Uh, I believe he only has one year left on his deal. Jordan Lewis um, will be an understricted free agent. Uh, the question is, do, do you think Joseph is the guy opposite um, Trayvon Diggs, perhaps, perhaps, but but I, I like an embarrassment of riches at the cornerback position and Never. at Andrew Booth to that group. 
And I think I think you got a really, really talented young group there with some length and who can turn the football over. I, I think that's part of the reason why I'm higher than perhaps most with respect to Booth is right. because of what he brings to the table in terms of being able to turn defense into offense. I think that's an underrated characteristic. Those ball skills are otherworldly. And when I say he's he's an amazing athlete, he might be the best athlete in the class. Not just at the right. position, but at the class. I mean, we talk, twitched up, man. Yeah, and it's always on the balls of his feet. You yeah. know, I, and, and I think just from a just from a, an evaluation standpoint, I, I felt cheated. I felt a little cheated because Clemson played so much zone. I would have liked to see him play more man because he He's got the traits, man. He's definitely got the traits. Uh, I'll say this too. You know, Dallas, you know, was, was was the team, and there's always a team every year that lives off of turnovers in terms of their defense. And this is this if, if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna need that, if you're gonna live doing that, why not draft a guy who, you know, is gonna is gonna take his chances, although they're very calculated and he's he's not gonna do it. The way Diggs does it, where he right. takes a bunch of chances. It's yeah, gonna biting be biting on the double moves, right. biting on the double moves and stuff like that. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna be. I'm on my guy. You throw it over this way. I'm gonna go up and get the football type of thing. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Twenty <laughs> fifth overall pick in Austin Gale's mock draft. We have the Cincinnati Bengals selecting offensive tackle Bernhard Raymond from Central Michigan. Now, we've talked about this ad nauseum. Um, we, we have an older video with respect, but we debated, you know, perhaps Jamar Chase versus Panay Sewell. Somebody commented on it recently. It was like, I guess y'all were wrong. And, and you know, I, I rewatched the video and it was like, were we though? They suggested like we were we were taking shots at Jamar Chase and, and we weren't. We were just saying that, you know, prioritize the offensive line. Now, right. it worked out beautifully. Right. right. Joe, Joe Burrow and the connection with, with Jamar Chase and, of course, T. Higgins. And later in the season, they, they remembered they had a Tyler Boyd as well. Right. You know, that that's that's tough to defend, man. You, you can't roll coverage. You can't double up, whatever the case may be. And Burrow, Burrow puts the ball where it needs to be. But he still was the most sacked quarterback <laughs> in the NFL. So, yeah. you know, it, can you count on that year in and year out to, to have that level of explosiveness in terms of your offense yet – you know, be a turnstile in terms of your offensive line. Probably not. So, so this pick makes a lot of sense. Tell me about the player. Easy mover gets to the second level um, with with no no problems. The one issue I had that I saw immediately, and he kept doing it, kept doing it, it was driving me nuts. And I think this is just a technique thing. You're just gonna have to say, listen, you gotta like. He was playing like his arms were like like he had T Rex arms. Oh and, no, not the and he would let him. Yeah, but but he was so strong. Even even right. though they would get up in him, he was able yeah. to kind of yeah. lean back, get pushed back, but an able to recover. You know what I mean? Anchor. Drop it. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. But you can't college. You can get away with that in the NFL. Sure. sure. I don't think you're gonna be able no. to get away with that. He's grown, no. man. Bones yeah. are denser. You know what I'm saying? Muscles are You know what I mean? So <laughs> you gotta be able to. We gotta fix that, man. But I, but I, but I, I like the pick in terms of. Um, you know, going to the Bengals. If we could fix that one little flaw that I saw, yeah, you're good. You're good. All right. Let's run it. All right. The next pick, the Miami Dolphins are also addressing their offensive line, which yeah. which is a group that struggled mightily this season. They they opted for Trevor Penning out of Northern Iowa. Yeah, bro. I mean, listen, um, they don't have a choice. Like, th this is one of those teams where it's like, you were not doing anything else. Barring all of them off the board, all the top guys right. are off the board. Right. You don't have a choice. Whether it's it's inside on the O-line or outside on the O-line, pick one and <laughs> let's run it. Because I don't know what, what, what we're gonna do with two. I don't know who's gonna be the coach. I'm not sure what, what's happening. We're trading for, for, for um, Deshaun Watson. I'm not sure what's going on there, but you gotta be able to protect your quarterback. And this is a team who I thought the, the, the offense should have gone through the run game. And, and this is a team who at times could run, but at times, could not, you know what I mean? It was bad, and I like Penning here. Um, super athletic. I know we, we've talked about it before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is, is is not technically sound. Has some work to do. Sure. Uh, but but he, he he has to be better than anything you've had on the offensive line. Period. Yeah, I you know, it, it all depends, right? It all it all depends on how the draft is unfolding. Um, they should probably trade up to be honest with you. Yeah, and that's exactly where I was going. That's yeah. exactly where I was going. With, with my comment is that, you know, depending on the situation, depending on, on who slides a little bit, perhaps in the team, Miami needs to be aggressive about improving their offensive line. It isn't it isn't for lack of trying. They, they have they have certainly invested uh, draft capital, but they have not been able to get the right five 
out there on the field. You know, and I and I think compared to compared to 2020, I think they took a, a step back this past season. You know what I mean? And this is a team that we thought could could find their way into the playoffs. Uh, I thought is you know considering how they were playing defense and, and, and you know year two Tua, you get him a weapon and Jalen Waddle. You know what I'm saying? We, we thought that this team could could break through, but but they they came up a bit short here. And and the offensive line is a big part of the reason why they weren't able to make it into the postseason. Uh, next up, the Buffalo Bills selecting big Jordan Davis from Georgia. Um, I like the pick, particularly when you think about you know where where Buffalo could potentially improve. I, I like corner here as well. You know what right. I'm saying? Davis White coming off the injury. Levi Wallace could be an unrestricted free agent. Um, certainly corner is an option here, but you put Jordan Davis next to Ed Oliver and let, and, and, and not just Ed Oliver, of course, of course, in terms of the interior, the three technique, that would be lovely, right? Jordan Davis takes on your double team and Ed Oliver get, goes, gets to go to work one-on-one. But of course he frees up your edges and Rousseau and, and uh, Epinesa and, I, I, you keep you keep you know your linebackers clean at the second level. Like Buffalo's defense, you know, as good as talented as this Buffalo team is, I think there's another plateau for this Buffalo defense. And, and Jordan Davis might be the key to unlocking it. Yeah, yeah, because because uh, teams for a couple of games is just running running through them boys like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, they gotta show it up a little bit. They gotta show right. it up a little bit, but yeah, yeah, right. Because because their pass defense, I think, if I'm not mistaken, was number one in the league, but. Run defense was a little, little soft later in the season and, and kind of dropped them in the rankings in terms of their defense. But Jordan Davis would be, like you said, he, he would be the key that would open that door to solidify that defense as a top um, top five defense in, in uh, run and in pass. Yeah. All right. Next up, the Detroit Lions, 28th overall pick, the second of two first round picks. Now, of course, they went Kayvon Thibodeau with the second overall pick. And, and this is the first I'm seeing this particular approach, right? Generally, we've seen the Detroit Lions select a receiver here, perhaps even a quarterback, thinking ahead with respect to, to replacing Jared Goff, ultimately. But Osagel has him selecting edge David Ajabo, who who slips a little bit here. I assume, I assume you know, kind of the, the one-year wonder type of production may have something to do with that. But um, what do you think about Detroit doubling up in terms of edge rusher? I don't hate it. I mean, it's a team that just needs talent, man. Just just fill it up, man. And what do you do? You say, okay, well, we're going to go and get, you know, arguably the the best uh, edge uh, rusher in the draft, and then we're going to turn around. We're gonna we're gonna go and get one of the the, the next the next in line, if you will, the next uh, tier and, or so. And, yep. Yes, down to to um, uh, Ajabo, and it's in the trenches. You can never hate. You know what no, I'm saying? No, especially especially no. on the defensive side in terms of the amount of guys that you have there. Yeah, Waves that's it. Fast rushers. Yep. You know what I mean? Defense wasn't awful this season. You know what I mean? I think the offense I mean, we could probably call awful because they, you know, just just bad at times. I, I, I like the pick. I'm 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 fine with it. You know, uh I think maybe here for me, I'm probably going to the Marvin Liao, but mm. you know what I mean, because it's a little bit more vers- versatile there and a little bit more mm-hmm. stout. Mm-hmm. But I understand, and I, I, I get the I get the pick. It's 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 sexy up top in terms of Thibodeau, and sexy down here, at the twentieth pick, and, and um, Ajabo, splashy. You know, when I say sexy, I mean splashy. Yeah, flashy. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. There's a there's a few edge rushers here at the bottom of of Austin Gale's yeah, mock draft. Yeah, he pulled them out, bro. Like, it's kind of like you know, what's your flavor? You know right. what I mean? What, what, what are you looking for now? Of course, they get the Michigan product here, local product. Uh, as far as where he played his college ball. Um, Jermaine Johnson is certainly in the conversation. Uh, the, the, the UGA has a couple of, of pass rushers that that could enter the conversation as well. Um, speaking of Jermaine Johnson, he's up next with the Kansas City Chiefs, and and again, this is one of those teams where, yeah, you know, either either you address the corner position or the or the edge position. I, I think that's I think that's the long and short of it. I know some might feel that Kansas City still needs that that other receiver opposite Tyreek Hill, perhaps a bigger. Um, a, a bigger target, bigger catch radius, but just just knowing Andy Reid's approach as far as his scheme is concerned, you know, I, I think they're perfectly comfortable with the likes of a Byron Pringle or perhaps another veteran to kind of, you know, be that that pre- that third or fourth option in the passing game. But but it goes through Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill ultimately. So I think they're better served being able to affect the passer, whether it's rushing the passer in in, in the form of Jermaine Johnson. Or perhaps a, a a corner, or, or even a safety, considering that Tyron Matthew 
and um, Sorensen, your boy Sorensen, might might be on the outs. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was watching Johnson today, mm-hmm. um, you know, prepping for the the Senior Bowl, and I think I'm gonna do um, I think I'm gonna do a video on him. I think I'm gonna do okay. a video on him. Okay. Uh, we'll scout but, him up. Yeah, we'll, we'll scout him up. We'll right. scout him up. Maybe be on the lookout for that. Um, this is a guy who I think is outstanding at the run. And I think he has a, a very good first step. The only issue that I have that I saw so far is that he doesn't necessarily have a a plan B if mm. plan A don't work. Sure. Right. Um, now I'm not saying he's getting beat up after that, but it's just like, okay, well, okay, if this didn't work. What's the what's the next thing, right? Um, and I think he he lacks that. I think you know for the games I've watched, maybe I'm wrong, and go back to the tape and get, continue watching. But that's just what for my from what I saw. And if I'm not mistaken, he's going to be at the Senior Bowl. Yes. So that'll be one thing that I'll be watching for, you know, um, in terms of him, you know, seeing what, what the secondary moves he has. Uh, and I understand the pick, like you said, in terms of edge or corner. I'd probably go corner here before I go edge. But, you know, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll see uh, how that works out for the Chiefs. All right. Your Tampa Bay Bucks are on the clock with the 30th overall pick and selecting my guy, yeah, Roger guy. McCreary. <laughs> Roger McCreary. Now, of course, we have a scouting report video on the channel. Check that out, covering Roger McCreary in five plays. They give you, I mean, literally three years worth of film in just five plays. Got you, bro. We got you. We got you covered, man. For your convenience and entertainment, we got you covered. I I think this is absolutely perfect. You know, of course, they kind of got that Auburn cornerback pipeline going with Carl Davis and Jamel Jamel Dean. And and, and, and I'm going to be real with you, my my, my boy. Roger McCree is better than both of them, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I think he's better than both of them, man. This this would be a perfect fit. Yes. Yes. I think this would be a perfect fit. There there are some other question marks, you know, as as of course the, the the Bucks pulled off an unprecedented feat, bringing back all twenty two starters, you know, in right. this free agency era, right? Post free agency era, um, but you got guys who are getting longer in the tooth. You got guys who've been succumbing to injury. Of course, that defensive backfield was depleted, whether it be injury, whether it be you know uh, illness, whatever the case may be, and and it's and it's. It's challenged Tampa Bay this year. You know, that, that depth has really been challenged. I think you slot Roger McCreary in there and, and you're in a great situation when, you, when you're talking about Davis, Dean, Bunting, and McCreary. Let me let me ask you something. So would you put, and by the way, I like the pick too. I actually love the pick. Yeah, um, would you, would you, could you play McCreary in the slot? Yes. Okay. Yes, McCreary. McCreary I, this might be a little bit of hyperbole. I try to avoid hyperbole as much as possible. <laughs> right. But but outside of, not even outside of, I'll put him in the same conversation with Stingley in terms of it doesn't matter where he lines up. No, we saw Stingley predominantly on the boundary. McCreary has played everywhere. And and nobody plays press in this class like Roger McCreary. Man. Facts. You know, the amount of snaps and, and his technique you know, his boss, I, I think, like I said before, may not necessarily be, you know, a 10 out of 10 in any one category, right? But mm-hmm. but he, to me, is the most balanced corner in this class in terms of doesn't matter what you ask him to do, he's going to do it, and he can do it at a high level, regardless of scheme, whether it's run support, coverage, you know, quick, you know, with short area quickness, long speed, boss, I think, I think he has the full gamut, you know what I mean? Again, May not necessarily have the otherworldly athleticism and and you know uh, prototypical size per se, but I, I, there's it's hard to argue with the body of work Roger McCreary has put together. He's going to be able to catapult himself because he's going to the Senior Bowl, you know, and when the combine comes around and be able to show his you know that's athleticism and his is you know all the the sparky stuff, he'll be able to do that. I think. Mm-hmm. He might be out of range for Tampa Bay when it's all said yeah. and done. I have a yeah. feeling. I really do have a feeling that's yeah. going to happen. Just a couple more picks here. In Austin Gale, PFF Riders, uh, 2022 NFL mock draft. With the 31st overall pick, he has the Tennessee Titans addressing their edge position with Majai Sanders from Cincinnati. I mentioned it before. Cincinnati has a lot of talent, a lot of NFL talent on this roster. Uh, Sanders, again, I, I certainly could see a situation, a circumstance where he ends up in the first round or comes off perhaps in the top half of the second round. It just kind of depends 
on what these teams ultimately, what their flavor is, what they're looking for out of an edge rusher. He was a little miscast. He, he was a bit of a miscast in Cincinnati. I don't think they always put him in, in the most favorable positions to kind of highlight his talents, but he has an opportunity to really build his draft stock um, and, and kind of catapult himself throughout the draft process in Mobile as well. What do you think about Sanders? Yeah, he's, he's a guy that's explosive off the line. He's long, um, you know, he can engage and disengage kind of at will. Um, I, I don't know that he handles, you know, double teams and stuff like that very well or, or more powerful uh, offensive linemen, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because he's not, you know, he's not the, he's a wiry guy, if you will, I'd sure. say that. Sure. Um, but like you said, I mean, he, he was miscast, misused. Um, this tends to happen in college football. So I think his, his best football is ahead of him for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with the final, the final selection in Austin Gills. There they go. First there round mock draft. There we have is. the Green Bay Packers selecting your guy, yep. Jahan Dotson, wide receiver from Penn State. You have the floor. You have a floor. I, I, I'm not. I'm not going to offer anything because I know. I know how high you are on Jahan yes. Dotson, receiver one at right now for you, right? No, nah, no, nah, he, he's not. Nah, I, I gotta. I'm probably going to give it to. Um, Who are you going to give it to? Probably give it to Traylon Burks. Oh, probably, probably okay. yeah, Burks. Burks is a rare. You know what I mean? like, yeah. he, he is a rare breed. But certainly, I know, I know, I know how excited you are about Jahan Dotson. Another player that we'll be able to get to see at, at Mobile. Yeah. I, so, so with with this pick, to me, it doesn't matter who's playing quarterback. Do the right thing. Do the right uh, thing. Spike, Spike Lee. Lee. Yeah. Yep. Do, do the right thing here. And and what you haven't done in years, and you need to do is he's staring you in the face. Just do it. He, he, he's a special guy. He's, he's not the biggest guy, but he plays above the rim. Got uh, speed, short area of quickness. Like he's everything you want in a receiver. And if you could just throw, you know, a couple more inches on him and a couple and and uh, a few more pounds, a couple, a few more pounds, he'd be receiver <laughs> one by a mile, right? Uh, but yeah, he's a special guy and he, he's reliable and he, he's everything you want at the position. And, and you you match him up with Devontae Adams and Alan Lazard. And um, who's the tight end they got over there? Um, Tunyon. Uh, you, you got something special in terms of that offense. Now, whether who's who's throwing them the football, how special it can be, we'll see. You know, in terms of Rodgers or um, or Jordan Love, but but you you can't you can't leave this draft, the 2022 NFL draft, without a receiver. We said that last year and the year before, but they did it anyway. So, yeah. a, 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 a first round talented receiver. Let me say that. Sure, sure. I I, I have no issue with it as far as, you know, the existing roster and what, what Green, Green Bay may they look like moving into the 2022 season. Um, I believe MVS, as well as Lazard, are going to be unrestricted free agents. They have some question marks, concerns long term in terms of their edge rushers with respect to Preston Smith, Zadarius Smith. They're, they're going to be going in their final year of their deals. Uh, there, there's some expiring contracts at the safety position between Darnell Savage and Adrian Amos. Th this team, as talented as they are, is going to have to kind of figure out the next step. You know what I'm saying? And and certainly, receiver is going to be, a, 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 has, has been and will continue to be a question mark unless they address it now. And and I think this is a perfect position to do so, you know? And and I it's hard to argue with the, with the talent of Jahan Dotson. All right. That's going to do it. That's going to do it for our mock draft reaction for Austin Gale of PFF. Really enjoyed this, Drew. I thought, yeah. you know, for the most part, um, the, the selections made a ton of sense. Um, some of them, you know, I had not necessarily thought of, but but certainly make quite a bit of sense. And, and, and right. things that, you know, you really you really you know kind of get the wheels spinning. That There were maybe one or two picks that I was like, oh, I'm, I'm a little yeah. out on. But but generally right. speaking, I, I thought Austin pretty much nailed this particular mock draft and i think i think you know when, when you've done because i think he's done a couple when, you, when you've mm. done a couple you're just like all right i just i, I need to do something a little different shake it you know up I mean? right yeah, shake, shake it, it up, up. Let me just yeah. let, me, let me throw a couple of guys in there that haven't been named haven't been mentioned but might be high up on the board mm -hmm. and and let's just see kind of how that falls out and you know see how people feel about it and you know hey i get it it is what it is guys again be sure to like comment and subscribe to the channel we'll see you next time